so this um, we're talking about exponential growth and decay functions so we're going to use this uh, basic function here for our applications and this is so exponential growth I'm just going to exponential growth and decay and we I briefly discussed uh, exponential growth of decay prior um, to this video and when we talked about basis of, of a of exponential expressions like if I have 2 to the x versus 1 half to the x you know this would be exponential decay this would be well this would be a decay model this would be growth model but you know when it comes to um, this particular function the base is positive right 2.718 it's e so what makes this growth or decay the, this um, value k is a constant and if k is positive then I have an exponential growth function. Exponential growth. So it grows exponentially. If k is negative, now I have an exponential decay function. So it decays exponentially. And obviously, if the exponent is negative, it creates a fraction here, right? 1 over e to the positive kt. So now, um, you know, we're going to use this in a lot of different ways. And you might have seen this type of view when you talk about compound, compound interest, compounded continuously. You go into this. But we're going to use it for more than just that. I'll talk about that briefly, but I want to do half-life and things like that. Um, a naught, that's what we say, A naught is the initial amount. Right? Because if, if I create 0 for t, time t, t is time, if I have 0 years, 0 days at the initial time, which is 0, e to the 0 is 1, I get a naught. a naught is my initial amount. And then a is the amount after t time. And I'm going to say t time because it's not necessarily in years. It could be in days. It could be in years. It could be in weeks. It varies depending on the situation. Okay, So t is time. Uh, a naught is initial amount and A is the amount in time T. So this is our growth and decay function that we're going to use for these half-life problems. Um, let me talk about half-life before I actually do the problem. What is half-life? Um, when we say half-life, it is the length of time for a substance to decrease or decay to half its original amount. So half life, how long does it take for a substance to decrease to half its original amount? So if I say, for example, the half life of uh, something, whatever it might be, is three days, in three days, that substance is half its original amount. So if I start with 20 grams of it, in three days I have 10 grams. If the half-life was three years, if I start with 20 grams, in three years I'll have 10 grams. So half-life, how long does it take for something to decrease to half its original amount? Okay, so, boom. Half-life of aspirin in your bloodstream is 12 hours. So it takes 12 hours for aspirin to become half its original amount, to become one half its original amount. How long will it take for aspirin to decay to 70% of the original dosage? Now, once you hear this part, the half-life of whatever is this. So, boom. That's supposed to be underlining that, okay? That's a very bad underlining. I can't deal with that. It's too ugly. Let's try to circle. <laughs> I just I'm not good at this long line thing. All right. Anyway, um, so it takes 12 hours for aspirin in your bloodstream to become half its original amount. So we have an exponential decay situation because half life is decaying. We're going down. So here, let's go straight to this function. And let's start. Now, the initial part of any of these type of exponential growth or decay function, the initial part is always to determine k. You always want to find that constant. That constant k is going to give you your general formula that you can use to find other things. 
So this is going to give me my k. Well, <clears throat> let's start with first 12 hours. So time is in hours. And right now I have that t is 12. But t is 12 when a is half of its original amount. In 12 hours, the amount that I have is half of the original amount, half life. In 12 hours, my amount that I have is half of the original amount. So let me plug all this in and see what happens. I'm going to replace a with 1 half a naught. A naught, I don't know. I don't know the original amount. I don't need to know the original amount. And then I have 12 up here, 12k. So um, notice that if I divide both sides by a naught, right, it cancels out. Divide both sides by a naught. It, can, it cancels out. That's why a naught doesn't really matter. The initial amount doesn't matter. I could find the function without knowing the original amount. It goes away, it goes away. So I have half equal to e to the 12k. So now I have a basic equation with one um, variable that I can now solve for. But what kind of equation is this? Well, the exponent is where my variable exists. Therefore, it's an exponential equation. Which type is it? Is it type 1 or type 2? Can I create the same base or can I not? Well, I cannot create the same base because e and 1 half do not have the same base. I can't do anything to create the same base between those two. So it's a type 2 exponential equation. I need to be able to recognize that, right? Well, I natural log both sides. That's what we do to solve these type 2 exponential equations. And I have the natural log of 1 half is equal to the natural log of e to the 12k but these are the same base, they cancel, it's equal to 12k. So now I have that k is, divide both sides by 12, ln of 1 half divided by 12, which is approximately, and you're going to see, um, this is the exact form of this k value. I'm going to plug it into my calculator, though, and get an approximate. Approximately negative 0.057762321. Obviously, I took a bunch of those digits to the right. You do not want to, if you're going to put it in decimal form, you do not want to round too much. Take at least six. I mean, how many I took seven of these? Because you're going to use this function now to find other scenarios. E to the negative 0.057762T. Now I have my represent... <laughs> this is multiplication in between the two. <laughs> now I have my representation of this exponential decay function. Notice k is negative. Exponential decay creates a negative k value, k constant. Um, and now I can use this to find you know, anything else. Well, it all depends on what I'm asked to find. Let me give myself some space here. So I have that a is a naught e to the. Uh, and you can use this exact value too if you want to. I'm using the decimal version, okay? Negative 0.05. Where's my calculator? 0.057623. Move that down a little bit. Move that down so you can see that. Okay. All right, so here is my function now. What's the next question? I was asked more than that. How long? What is t? How long? Let me write that down. T is question mark. How long will it take for aspirin to decay to 70% of its original dosage? 70% of its original dosage. So I don't know the original dosage, but I do know that I want the amount in T time to be 70%, 0.7, its original amount. How long will it take for the substance to become 70% of its original amount, 0.7 times a naught. Well, I could do that. I could determine t because forgot my t. I could determine t because once I plug this in, replace a with 0.7 a naught. Again, negative 0.057762t. The a naughts cancel when I divide both sides by that. E to the negative 0 0.057762. 
I'm just going to go back to that again. What do I do? It's an exponential equation because the exponent contains a variable that I want. I'm looking for t. Yeah, t is the only variable here. So, no problem. Natural log both sides. The natural log of 0 0.7 is equal to, again, these cancel, negative 0.057762t. Divide both sides by this. I'm going to uh, approximate it. T is approximately, uh, and it all depends on how you want to round. You know, if it's years, do you want to round to the nearest year? If it's weeks, do you want to round to the nearest week? I mean, how do you want to do it? 0 0.057, 7, 7, 6, 2, 3. Approximately, and what was I in? Hours? Hours. It takes about 6 point, let's just go 1, 7 hours for um, aspirin to decay to 70% of its original dosage. No problem. Um, the half-life of thorium-229 is uh, 7,340 years, so um, in 7,340 years, um, thorium will become half of its original amount. The amount would be half of its original amount, half-life. So use that first. Let's forget about the rest of it for a second. Let's just get our general um, formula. So A is one half of A naught for half-life, A naught E to the, we say in 7,340 years. So that means that T is in years. Let's solve this. We know that um, A naught is going to cancel, so we get one half on the left, E, 7340K. Um, we know that we're going to natural log both sides because it's an exponential equation. And <clears throat> on the left, ln of one half is equal to, these cancel, 7340K. K is equal to ln of 1 half over 7,340. And I'm going to approximate that. Natural log of 0.5 divided by 7340. This is about, it's a very small number, negative 0 0.1234. My calculator said negative 9.443 E negative 5. So that's scientific notation. Very small number. So my general representation of this case, A is A not E to the, K was negative 0 0.1234443 T. So this is my general representation of this case. Now what do I want? How long will it take? So that first sentence, just to give me my general situation. <laughs> my son is screaming in the background. How long will it take for a sample of this substance to decay to 20% of its original amount? So that means, so I want to know how long, T equals question mark, when the amount is, what did I say? 20% of its original amount. 20% of its original amount. So let's plug that in, right? E to the, so same thing. It's very repetitive. Um, you do have a few steps to do this, but it's very repetitive. A naught cancel, 0 0.2 is E to the negative 0.00009443T. Again, it's an exponential equation, so we're going to natural log, natural log. Um, so I have, I'm just going to bring this over, these cancel. So negative 0 0.1234944T is ln of 0 0.2. And I'm going to divide both sides by this. So I'm going to get approximately ln of 0.2 divided by negative 0.00009443, approximately 17043. I'm going to say 0 0.7. Because T was in, what, years? So it takes oh, huh, 17,043.7 years for, what was it, thorium to decay to 20% of its original amount. Now, I want you to think about this, you know, does it make sense? Because um, in my last example... Notice that the time that it took 6.17 hours was less than the half-life. Why? Because I didn't make it to half of the original amount. You know, um, it took aspirin to decay to 70% of the original dosage. 
70% of the original dosage is almost the full dosage, right? It's more than half of the full dosage. In this case, though, I'm 20% of the original amount. So now I'm less than half of the original amount. So I'm expecting my time to be greater than the half-life, and it is greater than the half-life. So make sure that that makes sense for your situation. Um, I just want to do one more, like a compound interest problem. Compound interest, and I'm going to do specifically compounded continuously. Just one quick example of this. Um, and this is your compound interest problem. Per, I don't know if you guys remember this, where A is the amount after T, you know, years. P is your principal amount, the original amount. R is your rate. Um, and T is time in years. So it's the same kind of model, but this should be exponential growth. Now I just want to know, um, let's say when your interest rate is 5% compounded continuously, right? Compounded continuously. How long will it take your money to double? How long is it going to take your money to double? So in other words, Using this formula, because I'm compounded continuously, um, the interest rate is 5%, so R is 5% in decimal form. <clears throat> How long will it take, T is what, your money to double? How long will it take your amount to be twice the original? Double is twice, triple is three, right? How long will it take it to be double? So A is now 2P, it's PE to the R, which is 0.05T. Let's see how long it will take. Same idea, the P's are going to go 0.05T. Notice that the exponent is positive, that K is positive, which means it's exponential growth. I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. Um, it's an exponential equation, I'm going to natural log both sides. Very similar to the half-life, it's just growth instead of decay. Um, and then I have, so these cancel, 0.05t is ln of 2. Let's see how long it's going to take my money to grow and double. ln of 2, oops, so ln of 2 divided by 0.05, oops, ln of 2 is approximately 13.86 years. And that's, you know, pretty legit, and you can't even find 5% anymore. So this is another example of a compound interest case, and this is, um, you know, growth. Um, or another example of exponential type of function, but this is exponential growth. And I just wanted to do a quick example of this. I know you see it in college algebra, but just to kind of add it to the list of other things.